Hi, it's Nancy again. Um, this is part two of what probably going to be a three part series um, in response to the question that I addressed yesterday. And, and what we did yesterday is we addressed the, uh, the seven choices, right? Um, sorry, I'm still getting used to the, uh, the whole live video and camera thing. So I'm sorry, it's a little, um, we'll just say a little unedited and unpolished, um, like me. <laughs> you can see it's been very hot today, um, very humid, and my crazy unpolished hair is, uh, is what's up. <laughs> so just uh, look past that. We're going to address today the, um, the other side. And, you know, this is the, the bookmark again that um, goes with my book. And you'll see we're going to deal with the, the five actions in response to what do you do when dealing with someone who believes a liar. And we're going to go through the five actions after you, you do the, uh, the inner work for the seven choices is to get connected to why this is even going on for you and forgiving yourself for having this kind of conflict and learning to listen with your third ear. It's going to be very important to, um, to deal with that. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to like fix that crazy hair sticking up. <laughs> so talk about conflicts, right? Um, we deal with them all the time. But we're going to start with uh, with the the conflict between the person who emailed me with this question and the person that they feel very strongly with. Like I said, I think this is someone that they love and they're kind of shocked that the person that they loved is believing someone that they think is a liar. So uh, that's why I'm going to turn it into three parts is because the next video is going to address the conflict between the person who emailed me and the person they believe is a, is a liar. And I'll work through that as well using the, the five actions from the third year conflict resolution process. So the first thing we want to do is succinctly define the conflict. And I like to use a very simple format for, for my, my clients of just saying, I disagree with blank about blank, right? So, and obviously fill in the blank. So in this particular situation, it is the person who emailed me disagrees with what appears to be probably a loved one about whether or not this third person is a liar, right? So it's very simple if you break it down into that. And that gives us a place to focus so that we're not putting all of our energy into trying to resolve conflicts from the past, um, something that's irrelevant um, as a lawyer you know we do a lot of a lot of discussion in the courtroom about what's relevant and what isn't to a particular dispute in this case we're really just dealing with there's a conflict between two people about whether someone is a liar so then to get into why is this even important we go to action two where we identify the interests of the of the two parties so the person that emailed me I, um, if you're watching the video, hopefully you are. If not, I'm going to email you back with a link so you can watch it later. But um, this is for you. I want you to take a look at what you expected from this person. Um, there's something going on in your relationship with him or her that is having you question. And I mentioned that yesterday, too. Probably having you question a little bit about who you think they are. Maybe you expected them to be a different way, to have a different opinion. So you want to look at that. You want to look at what you, you think about them, what you believe about them, what you expect from them, and what you need and want from them. What you might discover in that is that it doesn't really have a lot to do with the person that they believe. Um, it's, it's using that third ear and taking a, taking a look at, who this person is for you, and does it matter that they believe someone else that you think is a liar? How is that affecting your relationship? And that's what I'm inviting you to take a look at and look at what you need from this person. Do you need them to disbelieve someone you think is a liar? Or does it go deeper than that, right? Um, do, how does it affect your relationship with this person? That's the important thing, because you're not going to be able to necessarily change someone's views. You're not going to necessarily be able to make someone not a liar on certain issues. 
um, you may catch someone in a lie, right? But that's not what this conflict is about. When we're really looking at this, this is a conflict with you and someone you love. Now, I'm going to invite you also to eventually have a conversation with, with your loved one about why they believe this other person. And is it a general belief about everything a person says? Um, I think what you'll find is that most of us, we believe a lot that certain people say. We have a lot of trust in, in, in them. I tend to trust almost everything that my best friend tells me, right? I've known her since I was 12. I trust my partner to tell me. However, I also know that there are times that these people that I love aren't always ready to admit to themselves what's going on. So I have to be patient with them and give them space to work through their own beliefs and thoughts and expectations around their relationships with other people and unless this is this relationship with this third person that you think is a liar is directly affecting your relationship then go back to that that choice number seven of the seven choices and listen with your third ear and just remember how much you love them and why you love them and that maybe this doesn't even matter in your relationship remember who they are who they are for you look for the evidence that they're still that person, even if they have a belief that you don't agree with. So then after we, we take a, we work through this, and this is, what, this is what we do in the mediation process too when we're doing transformative mediation, is we then play with the possibilities of, if you could have this conflict between you and your loved one resolve in any way possible, what would happen? You know, maybe, Maybe it would be that they just reassure you that your relationship is still stable and nothing has changed. They still love you, you still love them, and maybe you disagree on certain issues. But it's probably a lot less, I'm suspecting, um, based on the, on the, again, on, on what I know about you and who I think this is about. Um, but I'm making assumptions, so I'm also letting those, setting those aside so that you can just delve into this for yourself. And obviously, if you want more help with it, you can reach out to me. I'll be happy to, to intervene. But when well, you just play with the possibilities of you could have this resolve in any way possible, what would happen? And then I ask you to also look, using your third ear um, and listening for this, I want you to, to consider what might that other person want what is what is their ideal scenario in this conflict it might be that you just agree to disagree right it might be that you trust them to make these decisions on their own and that it doesn't matter in your relationship and it's okay it doesn't mean they're anybody different than what you thought it's just they're they're believing somebody um, for whatever reason and when that's why we get into the interest because sometimes for the reasons that we believe someone or we think we do we want to right we're convincing ourselves that someone is lying we'll poll um, people around us to try and get evidence that someone is or isn't a good person and as i mentioned yesterday like none of us are a hundred percent good or a hundred percent bad and none of us are like walking talking lying producers there are some of us that might produce a lot of lies and get very good at it, and, and it's very comfortable, but there are also times that those liars tell the truth. So, you know, again, as a lawyer, when we're in the courtroom, we break this down very finely. That's why we don't allow certain types of evidence in. Um, it takes a lot for us to condemn someone or punish someone or, or decide a case based solely on one or two things. That, that's why we do a whole trial and we look at things, at things from, in, uh, from the past. If we're gonna look at someone's past history, we're going to look at does that actually affect what's going on in that person's life right now? So if I broke the cookie jar when I was a kid, does that mean that the cookie jar that was broken in my house was broken by me as an adult? right? Um, it doesn't, right? Those are two very different instances. So you, so I ask you again to just kind of look at that and consider the full range of possibilities for resolving this conflict with the person that you love. And then once you've done that, I want you to, to look at what, what are a couple of actions that you could take? And I think the, the, the obvious one for you 
is to go and talk to this person that you loved or that you do love, right? Not, not that you did. Um, hopefully you still love them even if they're having these beliefs um, and trusting someone that you don't trust. A, a friend of mine last night mentioned that she does this with her daughter um, and has taught her to say, what is your concern in this situation? So you might go to your loved one and just open that conversation with, I have some concerns about your relationship with this person that you believe. Um, I'm not sure that they're telling you the truth and I'm worried about what that might be for you. Because that's probably what's going on, right? Is that if someone's trusting an individual that we think lies to them, we're probably concerned that our loved one is going to be hurt in some way. And I want you to explore that before you go too much farther in your judgment around this person or the judgment of the, the third party. Like really get into what is your interest and then start taking action. So the first one is probably to have a, a very candid conversation with your loved one about the future you want with that person. And if the believing a liar is getting in the way of the future you want with that person, then explain to them why. And then agree to take some actions, whether it be on your own, maybe it's getting to know this third person and determining more about them and their beliefs and the things that you think they've lied about. Doing some research, right? Because again, as I mentioned yesterday in this is that very rarely do we have all the information. And even in the courtroom, I've learned as a lawyer when I'm trying cases that I never get perfect facts. I do my best and the other side doesn't either, right? No one gets the perfect facts in their cases. And that's why we have judges that try to work their way through it and come to some sort of, of conclusion on what the facts are. As a quick aside, it's also why I love mediation because in mediation you get to create it. And that's what we're doing here is instead of judging and expecting somebody to decide whether or not that third person is a liar, I'm inviting you to go, why is this even a conflict in your life? Is it affecting your relationship with this other person? And if so, I'm inviting you to address that. That you can take action on. You don't have any control over the third person, right? But you do have control over your relationship and the, and the way that you relate to this person that you love. And then the, uh, the fifth action that sometimes people go, it's not really an action or it's a series of actions, right? And it can be. So the fifth action is to stay on par, and that is to plan, act, revise, and repeat until you get the result that you want. This is a reminder that when you're in relationship with people, things are always changing around you. You are changing. You're not the same person that you were when you created this relationship with, with the person that you love. And it doesn't mean you don't still love them. It just means the world is always changing around you, and you have to adapt to it. And how do we adapt? We adapt by having really authentic conversations with them, listening with our third ear, and creating a future that we can agree on. So I'm, again, inviting you. Hopefully this is helpful, and just it's another exploration. But now you're going to involve the other person. So yesterday we went through the seven choices so that you're choosing to be strong in this situation, choosing to, to learn why it's even an issue for you. And now that you've done that, or if you're not ready today, maybe you, you just watched the video and you're not ready yet, that's okay too. You watch this one, you can watch it again, it'll be here. Do it when you're ready, but when you only after you feel like you really know what's going on for you, do you want to go and approach the other person? That, again, because this is someone you love from what I gather and you want a powerful relationship with him, and her, or, him or her, or maybe it's someone you're thinking, maybe he, you don't know them anymore and you're not sure you want to be in relationship with them. Either way, you don't want to make a knee-jerk decision, right? You don't want to make a rash decision on ending a relationship. I don't think you would have brought it up if you didn't truly have feelings for this person and care about them and want the best for them as well as your relationship. So take it slow. Make those seven choices. Get connected with your inner, inner game before you approach the other person about what's going on with them and then creating the resolution together. 
okay, if you need help, give me a give me a little, another email, reach out again. I'm happy to walk you through this, but focus on on loving that person and listening with your third ear. Thanks. Have a great day.